being here and also the people online. Um, I'm Vanessa, um, a designer. I come from Colombia, and I'm happy to share here today what are the insights that we've gotten in the meantime with, with Sugar Network. Um, the question, the first question would be like, why Sugar would have some insights to share? And to do that, what I would like to invite you to do is to play a bit, play backwards like I've said, if it played backward. It's not playing backwards, but imagine a cassette <laughs> that is playing backwards. And I want to start telling you the uh, giving you an example of what is it that we achieve with the Sugar Network every nine months. And I will do it by introducing a project that has had already the chance to mature after the Sugar time. And that project started uh, back in 2019. In this project, we had students coming from the University of St. Gallen and students from the Technical University of Munich coming together to work on a challenge that was proposed and sponsored by Osram. At that moment, Osram told to the students, OK, guys, let's find a way to enhance uh, the interior lightning experience for autonomous cars. And starting with this, with this big question around a bit broad, students started realizing, OK, how is the general context for autonomous cars happening? How is the lighting experience happening inside there? And they found that there is not really much, um, oops, that the, there's not really much um, innovation around it. So they thought, OK, what else? Starting from a design thinking approach, this is a hint. Starting from a design thinking approach, they said, what, is, what else is it that people are doing inside their own cars? And they found a problem that every third, third person in the world has. And I'm pretty sure that you, the people here, and also the people online, has at some point um, suffered from. And maybe some ideas come to your mind. I will just play, play the drums and, brrrrum, and announce it. If the clicker works, oops. And it is called the motion sickness. So motion sickness is this discomfort that we feel uh, usually when we are working at the car. And that's something that is becoming more, like, more frequent in our lives. Like working at the car is part of our new way of working, right? Um, the students said, OK, this is a, and of course approved by, by Osram. They said, this is a promising challenge. Let's focus on that. Let's explore more about it and learn and understand better the problem before we try to look for a really good solution. And this is how they found the key to the motion sickness uh, syndrome, which is the sensory conflict theory. I'm not an expert in the topic, so I won't dig deep, deep, super deep in the topic. Uh, but basically, what happens with this uh, theory is that the brain is getting two different inputs. On one side, it has the ear that, with the balance, it realizes Mm, there is movement, so it sends the signal to the brain, there is movement. And on the other side, there is the eye that is quite fixated on a document, on a computer, whatever we are working on. And the eyes, they are saying, say, telling to the brain, no, there is no movement. So the brain kind of gets this confusion, and that's where the syndrome um, pops in, in our feelings. With this information, and much more information, of course, and research from the students from Technical University of Munich and the University of St. The, yeah, University of St. Gallen, um, they started prototyping and finding what were alternatives to meet those, to, to find a solution and deliver a lighting experience for a context like the autonomous car. They also, they also did a lot of prototyping, um, and after that, after like nine months, which is the, t the time that we, that we spend with the students working on these type of projects, they not only manage uh, having people feeling way better in terms of motion sickness, but they, they also manage their solution to allow people to have longer trips before the motion sickness symptoms kick in. The impact of the student solution was so positive and so valuable for, for the company that back in 2019, they um, filed for a patent that is currently in process. And like these process, like these projects, 
there are many other out there that were born in Sugar Network and are not only in the German market, like you can see here, but also all around the globe. Now, I want to stop for a second because it's been like a lot of uh, inputs uh, on, on, on what is it that we're doing, but who is Sugar and where are those learnings coming from? So, um, to do that and to link it to the conversation that we, we have been having in this conference, uh, we want to focus on what is the impact that the virtual exchange has in such type of international higher education programs. The students from the University of St. Gallen and the Technical University of Munich, they never, they, I mean, they, they met in person, but they were working mostly virtually. And positive impacts that we were saying and that we were seeing, and this is the very first one, is that the virtual exchanges, um, they provide the opportunity for early exposure to diversity to the students. So it's not only important that the students in working in these setups, that they are exposed to the diversity, because of course they, they get a lot of value out of it, but also that it happens early enough so they can get more and more value the next time that they are exposed to, to different cultures, to different genders, and so on. And especially this is because they can focus on understanding each other, different perspectives, instead of judging. And as an alumni was mentioning before, um, they also learned that it's not a an ego game. It's actually rather a, a possibility to identify what are the strengths of each one of the team members and leverage them and make the whole team stronger. But these are the kind of things that students can learn and can start leveraging only when they have these kind of exposures. And being able to identify what are those strengths and being ex exposed to, those that, to that diversity also gives them the possibility to adapt more easily next time. Because next time, I know how to talk to someone from a different culture. I know how to talk to someone from a different career. I know um, what are the do's and the don'ts in certain, in certain setups. And also that happens is that uh, another positive impact that occurs is that there are more bridges from this uh, virtual exchange where Students can access better quality skills, but it's not only because we can invite experts in certain topics, it's also for the future. You don't know when a team like the one that we were, we, we were introducing before, Munich and St. Gallen, Switzerland and Germany, when at some point they become experts in the future and they are familiar already because they met at Sugar and they meet in the future and they say, hey, Let's do this, let's collaborate, or I need help on that. And these kind of interconnections happen just because uh, we have access, we have the possibility to educate people in a virtual exchange. However, of course, virtual exchange has some challenges. The first that comes to our, to our minds, and it's something that we assume today, and we, of course, try to look for um, possibilities and ways to tackle that challenge, but it's just a reality. It's that virtual exchange will never replace, or at least until today, is not replacing the face-to-face -face interactions. The way you bond to the people, the way you, you interact with them for the future, it's not necessarily as strong and as lasting as it happens in face-to-face. In -face. However, one thing that we try to do, as mentioned at the, at the very beginning, I'm the network coordinator and I work with Maya, my colleague who couldn't be today here, um, is we try to be connectors. So we try to keep talking to one university, to another university, and make sure that people are still interacting, introducing to each other. A second uh, challenge that we have experienced from virtual exchanges is that it's more difficult to identify those cues where conflicts start being born. So here, what we have seen as vi very vital to tackle this challenge is to have always to come with the support of the teachers, the coaching, and guiding, it's very important to guide the students, not only in addressing the conflict itself, but also helping them with, the, with previous experiences to spot those conflicts. A final um, challenge that we want to share with you today is uh, 
that virtual exchange demands a lot of multitasking, and it doesn't necessarily help to be present. So we see it not only with the students, but we also see it with the teaching team. You will see in a moment how is it that our network works. But generally, only when we manage to be all together in person, you can have really the community enjoying, learning, and being there, making the most of the interactions. Virtuality doesn't necessarily allow that, because in the meantime, you're receiving a message here. If you're a student, you know you have this other lesson, you're working on another project, and so on. So um, those challenges are important to keep in mind. We definitely support. We are mainly based on, on the virtual ex exchange. But it's important that we all acknowledge those challenges and we take them into account before facing it and have a plan, an action plan to face them. Um, the question for us that remains, and we're still learning out of it, is where is the right balance between face-to-face -face and virtual exchange? For us, it's not a matter of, OK, now it's demonstrated that virtual exchange is a possibility for higher education, then let's move 100% a specific program in that direction but it's rather, let's find a balance, because there are benefits from both worlds. And we have no answers for that question, but our awesome mix, <laughs> we still want to call it our awesome mix, um, to do it is through the Sugar Network. Now I can tell you more details about our network. We're a network of 25 universities around the world, the only one continent that we are still not having part of us, but we really want to do it and we're working towards it, is Africa. And um, in our network, as you can see, there are different universities that um, are represented in, because of the context. We want to mention mainly two, three universities that are the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, three German universities, the Hasso Platna Institute, which is actually our current home, and the Inno Space, which is from the Hochschule Mannheim. Out of these three German universities, we have two people who are big representatives and help us driving the strategy of, um, of the network. This is Falk Übernickel, Professor Falk Übernickel from the Hasso Platna Institute. And then we have also Gerhard Satzka for the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. You see that we have like a formal structure, and, and this is our, our board. However, we aim to drive the network as a community. And here you can see part of our teaching team uh, members, and those are the people responsible for running the, the program, the nine-month program. If you want to have more detailed information on each one of the universities that are part of SUGAR, you can always come to sugar-network.org, and there you will find a one-pager in the download section with the profiles and all the details um, that you want to have. Now, how do we as universities come together, and how do we achieve projects like OSRAM and WAVE, which is WAVE, the name of, of, of this project? There are two universities that partner up through a project that is given by a company. The, the, pro, the project is a challenge, a real life challenge that they have, and they are also sponsoring with some funding that enables students to travel to meet a few times throughout the nine months, and also that enables them to prototype. Um, then that means that those students from one of, uh, usually it's three or four from each they come together and they work on that challenge. We have two specific moments in which we aim always to be there, the entire community. For instance, this year we are 14 projects, so uh, we try to come to bring together all the students, around 80 students. Uh, the first event is the global kickoff, and the global kickoff this year occurred in Ireland, October, and now we are getting ready to celebrate the Global Expo, which is where the students present projects like OSRAM, um, named WAVE. That is going to happen this year in San Francisco. And there we not only come together to celebrate the success of the different projects, but we join our voices and do our sugar, sugar battle cry. I'll try not to do it so loud, so sugar! <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> so thank you very much.